Hi everyone, my name is Christine. I'm the bar manager here at the Brown Hound Bistro located in the Mag. Today I'll be making a signature cocktail for the Artist Affair. It's called the Pop Art Pink Lemonade Cocktail. If you don't drink, just use pink lemonade, some club soda, and garnish with a lemon. Enjoy! Hello, hello everybody. Okay, good, here we are. Welcome to an artist's affair. It's lovely to see you here to the extent that I can see you and to the extent that I can be with you. Uh, good evening. Um, I'm Jonathan Binstock. I'm Mag's Mary W. and Donald R. Clark Director. Thank you all so much for joining us virtually for an Artist Affair this year. Before we start tonight's program, I just want to briefly mention some housekeeping items. These may be familiar to you already. Uh, we have a live captioner with us today. If you would like to see captions, you can click the closed captioning CC button at the bottom of your screen. When this opening celebration concludes, your browser will take you to a short survey about your experience. Please let us know what you think. I make a big deal about this. Usually we love the feedback, we need the feedback. And um, if we're gonna keep improving our online programs, our virtual programs, it's essential to hear what you think. We have an exciting 30 minute program ahead of us this evening. Typically, we hold this annual fundraiser every year in person to showcase MAG's academic programs and celebrate the talent of our regional artists with a silent art auction. Because of COVID-19, we had to pivot to the virtual format, but we're excited about what's possible to share online that we couldn't showcase as easily in person. During our celebration tonight, you will see what our academic programs have looked like in this year of virtual programming, hearing directly from some of the students we've engaged. You'll also get some peeks behind the scenes at MAG, seeing the spaces that are traditionally at the center of our school tours. You'll hear from two of our docents whose passion for sharing our collection leaves a lasting impression on school children. And you'll get to know Dr. Niall Blunt, our dynamic new McPherson Director for Academic Programs about his vision for the future. Now, importantly, I would like to thank you, our supporters. Your tickets, sponsorships, and gifts enable us to keep the MAG vibrant um, as an art museum. And this allows us to continue, even in a pandemic, to provide for and connect with over 7,000 students in the Rochester area. We are tremendous, that's a big number for uh, virtual programming, by the way. Uh, we, uh, we are, Tremendously grateful for your support of the museum, especially in these challenging times. No one can express our gratitude better than the students themselves. So without further ado, here they are. Art is crazy, like, it can help with stress, anything. You can show people how you feel without even saying it. It brings art to life. The Memorial Art Gallery offers students an opportunity to view art that they might not necessarily see and to understand that it was made by human hands. I personally believe that art can transform lives. I think that um, a young student, a young child experiencing a, a, a work of art, a serious work of art, a masterwork for the first time, um, 
that can open their eyes to the world around them, that can help them understand the world they live in, help them understand themselves and their place in the world, can empower them to feel that they have the ability to shape their place in the world. It's important to express yourself because if you don't and you think something is wrong with a law or something, you can just express yourself through art and put it on or have a mural and things like that. Well, I think um, it's important to actually learn about art. It don't just teach us about anyone else's history, but it teaches us about our history. Art is history. So basically someone might create like a statue of Harriet Tubman to remember all the things she did for this world. Maybe like a piece of art, it could remind you of yourself. Because art can tell a backstory, it can express your feelings, it can tell a story, and it can do many more things that nobody knew about without saying it. It was important the Mag put together these presentations because if they didn't, People who would really want to come and see art but couldn't because no one's allowed to go into the actual place would it get left out and wouldn't be able to see any art, especially if it makes them happy. Making sure that students know that we are a part of their community, a part of their world. That is crucial not only for their mental well-being, for their, their mental growth, their development, but it's good for MAG too. We will not survive without school kids who come because their teacher brings them, continuing to come and coming back as adults and bringing their own families and supporting us. We will not survive without the community. We would like to think the community survives better with us. Good evening. I'm Dr. Niall Blunt, the McPherson Director of Academic Programs. I joined MAG in September, so this is my first time participating in an artist affair, and I'd like to thank each of you for supporting K-12 education. You just saw a fantastic video featuring the perspectives of a number of students who have engaged with MAG virtually. This evening, I'd like to take you on a tour of the crucial spaces at MAG that help us fulfill our educational mission. A school tour is deeply engaging. It can even be transformative for students. They're led by a core of expert volunteer docents who are deeply familiar with the collection. I'm standing in the school tour entrance where in a typical year, students and teachers would arrive at MAG. We're now in the docent room, recently renovated thanks to Richard and Natalie Ciccone. In this special space, docents prepare for their in-person and virtual tours. Preparing for an in-person school tour usually involves mapping out the route in the museum and selecting which works of art are best suited for the student group. In the past several months, we've transitioned to offering tours virtually. Virtual tours require specialized training, and we have about 20 docents who are involved in offering a number of deeply engaging tours virtually. We now find ourselves in the Charlotte Whitney Allen Library. The library is home to the Teacher Resource Center, where teachers can find many wonderful materials to help integrate art into their classrooms, such as these World Religion Kits. In response to teacher requests and interest, we've created virtual experiences around these otherwise tactile kits. The experiences, sponsored by the Konar Foundation, tie in especially well with Rochester City School District curricula. These kits are so amazing because through works of art, we're helping students build understanding of religious traditions and beliefs through exploring devotional objects related to Christianity, Buddhism, Islam, Hinduism, and Judaism. Finally, I'd like to show you one of our favorite spaces for school children. I'm in the Berkeley Gallery for Ancient Art, which contains our world-famous mummy, which is always a hit among students, and exemplifies MAG's status as a global museum representing over 5,000 years of art history. I hope you've enjoyed tonight's tour. 
And once again, I'd like to sincerely thank each of you for supporting K-12 education at MAG. We hope to see you soon at the Memorial Art Gallery. Hey everyone, I'm back. It's Jonathan, and I want to thank Niall for being our tour guide, showing us where the magic happens at MAG. Niall, are you with me here? There you are, hey. Here I am. Here you are. So um, thanks for being our tour guide, Niall. Um, you just joined us in September as our new McPherson Director of Academic Programs. I can tell you that we are all so thrilled that you're here. The senior staff, the board, people who have had the chance to work with you virtually. Um, you, you, you really picked up the ball and ran with it. So uh, in, a, in the time of COVID, which has just been uh, a great thing for me to watch as director. I, you come to us from Crystal Bridges Museum of Art and uh, you had an incredible experience there as an educator. Um, and Crystal Bridges, for those of you who are not familiar with it, may be the most pioneering museum in the country for academic programs in education, uh, engagement of K through 12 students. In a normal year, Niall was overseeing a program that welcomed 43,000 school children, which is outrageous when you think about it because the museum itself is not in a very populous area in Northwest Arkansas. It's as glorious as it were, Moshe Safdie kind of temple on a hill um, where everyone is welcome. But in any case, um, Niall, I have some questions for you that I'm hoping will help sure. folks get a feel for who our new McPherson Director of Academic Programs is. You came from this amazing museum. What attracted you to the Memorial Art Gallery? So there are so many things that I found really exciting about MAG. Um, first of all, I thought MAG's location in Rochester was really um, was, was great. I think working with a really dynamic, diverse community in Rochester is really exciting. I thought uh, working with a, a small but really nimble and really dynamic uh, museum was, was really exciting. Um, I was really thrilled about working with a team, a, 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 a group of volunteer docents who are uh, so committed to educating uh, students and guests, multi-generational guests at MAG, uh, who give so much of themselves. At my previous museum, I worked with um, <clears throat> with um, paid museum educators, uh, and working with volunteers is so much more enriching because they give so much of themselves and their time and their resources, and are so committed and devoted to uh, to the museum. It's just really inspiring to work to work with that group. I was also excited about the uh, opportunity to advance my career to to come to a place where I'm on the senior team, helping to make institutional decisions and helping to really guide the institution in really exciting ways. And of course, to work with you, Jonathan, which has been, which has been fantastic, so. I worked hard to get you here, Niall. We <laughs> interviewed Niall during COVID. I mean, we had to quarantine the guy for two weeks in, in, a, in a hotel in Rochester. Uh, and uh, I thought, I think it helped. You got to know the place a little bit better than you, than you would have in normal circumstances, zooming in and zooming out. You really got to walk around and, and see the, the neighborhood of the arts and the city and so forth. But um, I, Let's talk about where you're going, right? What, how are you, what's your vision for, for how we can build on our strengths at MAG and how we can enhance the educational experience of our school children? I think, uh, yeah, that's a great question um, that I'm really happy to answer. I think that one thing we can do that I'm really hopeful and have started the process, I wanna bring the entire institution uh, to this point even more so than we, what we've already been doing is really going into the community and really reaching into the community of, of Rochester and the greater Western New York region and um, asking uh, the members of the community, what can we do for you? How can we really support and work with and serve you? Um, and letting them know that, that the Moore Art Gallery is, is a place for this, where this community can feel a sense of belonging where people can come to really be deeply engaged, to have fun, 
to uh, learn about art, learn how to interpret art, learn how to talk about art, um, and receive a really broad yet interesting and um, deeply engaging art education program. And this is for school children, but also for multi-generational audiences as well. I, I'm, I'm really hopeful that we can uh, really uh, support and sustain MAG as a place where the entire community feels a sense of belonging and a sense of ownership, um, whether that people in the city of Rochester, people at the University of Rochester, people uh, in, in the greater region where everyone can really come and feel a part of something that is really special and that is fun and deeply engaging. Um, that is really important to me. The Memorial Art Gallery is really special. It is a truly extraordinary, stunning, powerful institution. Uh, your comment, um, the idea of transforming lives. You know, I'm a believer, deep believer in that potential for art. And making everyone, helping everyone to feel welcome is probably our biggest challenge and our greatest opportunity. The, the most uh, inspiring moments for me, some of the most inspiring moments for me at MAG is seeing the students engaged in the galleries with educators from the academic programs department, with a creative workshop teacher, with docents, with major artists engaging in conversation with young students. I remember um, this kid must have been five, six. Well, no, he had to be older than that, right? Maybe, maybe seven or eight years old. He raises his hand. Sam Gillingham is standing in front of his painting. And the, this boy's eyes are wider than like salad plates, you know? And he's staring at the artist and saying, how did you become an artist? And, and Sam Gilliam, who is an abstract painter said to him, if you want to make a basket, you have to be a basket. And this kid's mind, I, I'm pretty sure I saw it explode right there in the Wilson Gallery, it was amazing. And, and this happens all the time. I mean, it's happening all the time, I don't get to see it. Um, we welcome in a normal year, 12,000 visitors uh, in school tours through our doors, 12,000 students. They come from more than 100 schools, from more than 30 school districts. And uh, these tours often cater to larger school audiences. We also have a smaller, a much beloved program specifically geared towards serving elementary school students from the Rochester City School District. Niall, this is all of your domain now, plus a lot more. And we're so thrilled you're here with us. Um, tell us about the program that, uh, this program, this, 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 this boutique program, I, I just wanna hear your thoughts on it. Sure, yeah, the expanded learning collaboration is a really extraordinary, really a premier arts integration program. I'm, I'm familiar um, through my work and through my, my network of, of friends and colleagues, familiar with a lot of arts integration programs. And this one um, is really top notch and does some really amazing work with students in the Rochester City School District. Uh, the Expanded Learning Collaboration or ELC as it's called, it's a program where we bring elementary school students um, to MAG for a really wonderful in-depth um, art uh, integration, arts education experience, an in-gallery experience where they talk about a work or a couple of works of art, uh, have a facilitated conversation where they're not lectured to, but they're given the opportunity to express how they feel, express what the art makes them think about, express how it makes them feel, think, think about things like their own identity and their, and their uh, place in the world and those kinds of things. We have a really great conversation with a museum educator around a work of art. And then they go to the studio space at MAG and the creative workshop to create a work of art on their own that complements um, their experience in the gallery. So it's both talking about art, interpreting art, and then making art, which gives them a very well-rounded um, experience and a very deep experience. Uh, in, in understanding the power of art and really, I think, a really transformative, do that word again, a transformative experience around, around the arts, around the visual arts. Um, we're, and I, I, I'm so excited. And the, the ELC program was one of the big reasons that I decided to come on board at MAG and I was so excited to be welcomed 
on board at MAG um, because of the, of the power of this program. And um, I've had an opportunity, this program's been on hiatus this year because of COVID, um, but we're going to come back uh, in the next school year in full force and with some really exciting uh, changes to the program, some really positive changes. Um, we are going to be thinking, of, we, are, we are going to be expanding the program from uh, three schools, three elementary schools in the, in the city school district to five. Uh, which is really great. So we can reach, because my goal is to have as many students as possible um, experience this really, really transformative, um, transformative engagement. So we're having, we're up to five schools now um, with grades and, and ranging from grades one through five in, very, in various configurations of the schools. And we're going to be offering, um, we used to offer 10 or eight sessions uh, for each school, but we're going to be reducing that to four sessions. And that's because we really listen to teachers who have said, you know, fewer engagements um, without losing the quality of engagement would be better. We can easily more easily commit and we can reach, we Mag, can reach more students um, by having fewer engagements than 10 or eight and, and reducing it to four without sacrificing any of the great learning that happened, without sacrificing any of the wonderful, um, the quality of the education that happens um, and the program. And the best part about ELC, the very best part is that it's offered entirely free to the mm -hmm. schools that participate. And that is entirely um, due to, or because of the support we get from our donors and friends of the program, um, which, for which I, I am very grateful. My team is very grateful. Uh, everyone at MAG is extremely grateful. Um, we offer, free transportation to the museum. We, we offer a really great uh, engagement with professional museum educators. We offer, we offer the, all the materials and supplies for creating the art. We offer um, really great engagements with teaching artists and teaching assistants. Um, all these things happen free of charge, you know, because that's, because access is, is a really important, really important uh, part of what MAG does, bringing, um, people who may not otherwise experience um, works of art in, in real life, in person, um, bringing them that experience is really important. So the ELC program is, is really, really uh, phenomenal. And I'm so excited to see it run in person. I've heard so much about it and I'm just thrilled to be able to be leading a team, a very, very dedicated, very uh, talented team of people who put this program on every year. Um, thank you, Niall, and and thanks to everybody watching. Uh, you know, the support that Niall's talking about comes from you, uh, comes from the people gathering here tonight to celebrate Indeed. arts education and academic programs at MAG. Um, you and your staff and academic programs now do an incredible job. Uh, you're just getting going. You're with some amazing seasoned. Um, seriously experienced and impactful professionals and, and educators in your in your in your department um, your team makes our come alive for our school children and your partners in this work are the mag are mags docents an incredibly dedicated group of volunteers who have extensive and ongoing training um, to build their knowledge of our collection and to create dynamic tours we are now going to hear from docent chair john birch and docent Diane Boney. Hello, I'm Diane Boney, and I'm a member of the docent training class of 2019. Before becoming a docent at the MAG, I served for more than 32 years as a teacher and a school administrator in Indiana and several Rochester area city and suburban school systems. My name is John Birch, and I'm a member of the docent class of 2012, so I've been a docent for almost 10 years. Prior to that, I worked as the medical director of the American Red Cross Blood Services here in Rochester. One of my favorite works to show during school's tours is Alison Sars' Swing Low, her maquette for her 13-foot tall sculpture of Harriet Tubman that is installed in Harlem because it is such a rich piece. Children are usually familiar with Harriet Tubman and her importance as an abolitionist. 
It is so exciting when students make connections between the sculpture and current civil rights activists. But one piece that I like to use with smaller children is the Pancake Woman by Jan Steen. It's what would be called a genre scene or a scene of everyday life. And I like to point out that although it was painted about 360 years ago, it's an image that all of us can resonate with today. For many of the students on the school tours I've given, it's their first experience in an art museum. They are blown away by how we have pieces from far away and from thousands of years ago. The tours open up their imaginations, help them make connections between their lives and the works in the MAG, and let them know that MAG is a place where they belong and can have fun while learning. The best way that I can tell you what I think kids get out of coming to MAG relates to Fred Rogers and his Mr. Rogers Neighborhood TV show. A child psychologist named Margaret McFarland was a consultant on the show, and she was an expert in early childhood development, especially with respect to interactions with adults. She ran a child care center as a research effort at the University of Pittsburgh, and once she asked a local sculptor to come to talk to the children by saying to him, now look, I don't want you to teach sculpting. All I want you to do is love clay in front of the children. And I think that's exactly what we do when we are at our best. We love art in front of the children. What happens when we are successful is the kids leave the museum with an enhanced love of art. Of all the tours I've led, one moment I'll never forget occurred when I was giving a virtual tour to second graders. As soon as I shared a slide showcasing a montage of images from the sculpture garden and the collection inside Meg, students audibly oohed and odd. When I showed the Egyptian shrine coffin and zoomed in on the eye of Horus, a little boy went over to the bookshelf in the classroom pulled out a book on ancient Egypt, opened it up to a story about the god Horus, and walked up to the teacher to show her. It was such a magical moment, showing that even virtual tours are having powerful effects on students and their learning. Oh my gosh, I love that video. Thank you, dear docents. An important part of our fundraiser this week is the silent auction featuring works from six talented artists in the Rochester region. We will be concluding our online auction at 8 p.m., which is just two minutes away. Um, this is your chance to make the winning bid. Check back on the artworks you've been eyeing. Good luck. Um, this fundraiser could not be successful without the support of our generous sponsors. Many serve on MAG's board and several are also on the planning committee for this event. Let's hear from them and from a few of our key community sponsors about what MAG's K-12 program means to them. Good evening. My name is Alice Smith. I'm a member of the board of directors here at the MAG and chairperson of this year's Artists Affair. There are so many great things going on here at the MAG. We'd like to encourage everybody in the Rochester community to become part of our family. This event raises funds in support of educational programs for children in grades K through five and beyond. This fall, we hope to be bringing even more students into our program, which is in the after school hours. Please join me in support of this effort by either bidding on some of the artwork that's on display this week on our website or make a donation. Whatever you do, it will be very beneficial to our kids. That's why we do it for the kids. Thank you. Good evening. David and I are delighted to join you virtually in celebrating yet another fabulous and artist affair. As longtime educators, we know professionally and personally the importance of giving young people early exposure to the visual arts. By doing so, you literally open their eyes to the world and to themselves. As MAG board president, and on behalf of the entire board, I extend profound thanks to our generous sponsors and our guests who have chosen to make an investment in our educational outreach in the community. So enjoy this evening and remember, 
the best is yet to come. Thank you. Hello, my name is Dr. Leslie Meyer Small, and I am the superintendent of the Rochester City School District. I want to thank the Memorial Art Gallery for all they do to provide our scholars with educational opportunities in art. Students in the RCSD have been fortunate to gain hands-on learning experiences that have proven both positive and rewarding. We all know how challenging this past year has been, and I'm so grateful for the unique opportunities that our students have been able to receive over the years, both in person and virtually. These ongoing experiences are what build a true museum-based learning partnership. I truly appreciate and understand the power of an arts education, how it can transform lives and reach students beyond the traditional school day. Because of our partnership with the MAG, our students are able to learn new ideas and gain experiences that broaden their horizons. Thank you to everyone who continues to support the Memorial Art Gallery. Your commitment to the arts makes a lasting impact on the lives of our scholars. Hi, I'm Senator Jeremy Cooney. As a proud alum of the School of the Arts, I understand the important intersection of the arts and education. Now, I may not have chosen a discipline in the arts as a career, but my vocal music experience in my education has served me in so many ways. The arts has made me a more creative thinker and a more empathetic human. They taught me the value of practice and tenacity. I feel strongly that all students benefit from the arts as part of their school experience. And that's why I'm co-sponsoring legislation in the State Senate that would make art and music a required component of any K through 12 curriculum in the state of New York. All students deserve the chance to experience the arts and learn how it can enrich their life, even if they don't have the Memorial Art Gallery across the street like I did. I wanna thank everyone who has participated in an artist's affair, the sponsors and the attendees, for helping to make a positive difference in the lives of Rochester students. I look forward to a time when we can experience the arts in person together as a community. Thank you. I'm back. Our online art auction is now closed. Thank you again for joining us tonight and for supporting the MAG in so many ways. Your gifts this week will have a direct impact on the lives of our school children, helping them see and experience art in new ways and to see themselves and the world around them in new ways. Art education is essential, especially at a young age. Art is essential because it provides students with opportunities to develop socially and emotionally. These sorts of experiences that support non-cognitive learning are becoming fewer and farther between in school classrooms. We play an important role in providing full and far-reaching educational opportunities for young people, for our kids to grow up to be problem solvers and to work through challenges, art can help them. This is the work that we're doing. Now, as of this moment, I do have a text here from my colleagues. We had a goal of raising $75,000 this week and we have raised 84,000 $296 for MAG's academic programs through an artist affair. Thank you, everyone. Your gifts will provide directly, all of it goes to these things, museum educators, teaching artists, and teaching assistants for our program with RCSD, school buses to transport RCSD students to MAG, ongoing training for MAG's docents and Rochester area teachers so they can create engaging experiences for children using our amazing resources, art paper, clay, and acrylic paint for our RCSD students' studio experiences, and passes for students who visit MAG on behalf of school tours to be able to return to the museum with their families for free. We will be sharing a recording of tonight's celebration for those who could not join us to celebrate. So thank you all, thank you friends, and good night.